everybody. Today I'm going to be reviewing yet another Gen 2 base distribution. Today I'm going to be reviewing Calculate Linux. Uh, reading the blurb from their website at calculate-linux.org. Calculate project features several distributions optimized for two, distri two distinct groups of people. Home users as well as small and medium businesses that prefer open source to proprietary solutions. And it looks like we have a couple of different versions of Calculate Linux. We can install Calculate Linux Desktop, their desktop edition, or Calculate Directory Server for a uh, server edition of Calculate Linux. Obviously, today we're going to be reviewing the desktop edition. The Calculate Linux Desktop is a versatile replacement for Windows Workstation and provides an advanced set of applications including LibreOffice, development tools, graphics, and sound editors. It looks like we have the options of choosing either the KDE, Cinnamon, Mate, or XFCE desktop environments. It is 100% compatible with the Gen 2 repos with support for binary repository updates. So, pretty cool stuff. I'm going to download the KDE edition of Calculate Linux, the desktop. So, give me just a second, I'll be right back. Okay guys, I have downloaded the ISO for Calculate Linux, their KDE edition. And let me let VirtualBox capture my keyboard and mouse. Alright, the first thing we choose is locale. English United States has been chosen for me, that's correct. And now we have a menu where our options are Calculate Linux Desktop KDE Live DVD, so this would boot us into the live environment. We could also choose a mem test or boot from hard disk. I'm going to go to the first option and launch the live environment. This may uh, take a few seconds to get us to the live environment running off of ISO. Okay guys, that took about a minute for it to boot into the live environment. Again, everything is slow uh, when you're running uh, off these ISOs, these, these live environments. It's not an installed installation you know physical hardware so everything's a little slower alright so I'm going to look for the install here it is calculate Linux install I'm going to click on this alright and the installer has launched the first thing we choose is language and locale English United States again has already been chosen so I don't have to do anything here I'm going to click next distribution we want the calculate Linux desktop KDE yeah, that's fine. Oops, I didn't want to launch console here in the live environment. Let me close that out. Next. All right. All right, drive space. Do we want to do uh, any partitioning or just let it do automatic partitioning? Uh, I'll probably just let it do its thing. I've created a 15 gigabyte uh, virtual hard drive here in this virtual machine. So I'm going to let Calculate Linux have the whole 15 gigs. Alright, it looks like it's going to write slash div slash sda1. We're going to create an extended 4 file system. This is what it chose by default. I'm fine with the extended 4 file system. It's an old and uh, well proven file system. Network settings. I'm on a wired connection on this machine, so I shouldn't have to play around with any network settings. So, you know, it's annoying in the installer. This bottom dock keeps coming up, which gets in the way of clicking the next and cancel buttons uh, might be something the calculate Linux guys should take a look at get that dock out of the way when you're running the installer alright I need to choose a root password so choose a administrator password here use the root password for editing boot menu yeah that's fine migrating users let's see what else we have auto login I do not like to auto login so it's chosen to not auto login I'm gonna leave that as is oh I need to uh, do a password for user guest oh, let's see let's see if it'll let me add a user here yes it will I will call this user calculate uh, do we give it administrator privileges yeah why not groups uh, you know what? I'll worry about the groups later. But for now, 
you know, just to give it a group. Uh, let's make it a member of the wheel group. Just to get it set to one group for now. All right. Let's see if it'll let us. Password for guest is missing. Okay. Okay. Well, I got rid of that error message by just deleting the guest user since I created uh, my own username. I'm not sure if that guest user was really necessary or not. I guess I'll find out if the install doesn't go well. Audio is chosen pulse audio video, the XORG server, screen resolution. I wonder if we can actually change this here. I am on a 1920 by 1080 screen here, so that's pretty cool that you know it might let us change this resolution here. Grub terminal GFX term, yeah, that's fine. Uh, that dock, that dock is annoying in this installer. All right, updates. Uh, automatically check for updates. Yeah, I'm gonna tick that off in this virtual machine. Even if I was running this on physical hardware, I never like automatically updating. You know, I like to update when I feel like updating. So, we also have options for clean, obsolete program archives, update over overlays. I'm not gonna tick any of this on. All right, and then start installing. I'm going to go ahead and click Run, and it should format the disk and begin installing the system. I'm going to pause the recording. This will take a few minutes. Okay, guys, it is finished running through the installation. System successfully installed. And would you like to reboot your computer now to complete the installation? Anytime you install a new operating system, you have to re reboot the machine to complete the installation. I'm going to do that now. Be right back. All right, I rebooted the machine, and this is our freshly installed Calculate Linux. This is the KDE Desktop Edition. Let's see how long it takes to boot up here. Typical boot up times these days on Linux distros are usually 10 to 15 seconds is about a, a normal boot time for those that care about such things. Okay, so that probably took about 20 seconds or so to get to our login manager here. Not too bad. Alright, let's see. Log into our KDE Plasma desktop. This will take a few seconds. The first time you, you ever log into a, a freshly installed instance, uh, usually everything takes a little longer to load up the very first time. Okay, and we have booted into our KDE desktop environment. Looks pretty slick. Let's see if I can get the VirtualBox Guest Editions going so I can get a full screen resolution. Give me a couple minutes to play around with this. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I got the VirtualBox Guest Editions installed. Uh, it was the standard package in Engine 2. I, I just simply opened a terminal and used Emerge. Um, the name of the package is VirtualBox Dash Editions. Uh, anyway, now that we've got our full screen resolution, I'm going to go through the menu and see what programs are installed by default on Calculate Linux KDE. Under Development, we have Designer WYSIWYG Tool. WYSIWYG, of course, stands for what you see is what you get. All right, Graphics. We have GIMP, which is the GNU image manipulation program. We have GwenView, which is KDE's image viewer, standard image viewer in KDE. Also under graphics, we have Mu PDF, which is a PDF viewer. We have Ocular, which is the document viewer. We have Xsane, which is a scanning utility. Under Internet, we have, excuse me, Internet messaging contacts. KDE's uh, IM log viewer. We have KMail, which is a email client. Conversation, which is KDE's IRC client. This is your standard IRC client. Also under Internet, we have KTNEF. We have KTorrent, which is a BitTorrent client for the KDE desktop environment. 
Our browser is Mozilla Firefox, which is great. We also have the Pigeon uh, Internet Messenger client on here. Not too many people really use Instant Messenger anymore, so it's strange to see things like Pigeon and some of the other Instant Messenger stuff installed by default on Calculate Linux. Under Multimedia, we have Clementine as our music player. Uh, Clementine is probably one of the best audio players available for Linux. Fantastic music player. Let's see what else we have under multimedia. We have our K3B disk burning utility. K3B is part of the KDE suite of programs. It is probably the best disk burning app available on Linux, K3B. If you're, you're going to burn any kind of a CDs, DVDs, uh, bootable disk of any kind, K3B is a must have. K-Mix is our sound mixer. SM Player is our video player. All right. Also, we have under Office, we have K-Mail again, Contact, K-Organizer, and then it looks like the LibreOffice Suite. And then again, Ocular, the Document Viewer. Under Settings, we have Adobe Flash. Will Adobe Flash ever die? All right. Cute configuration tool for web de or not uh, program developers. We have our system settings utility here. Let me open up system settings. Yep, and this is the KDE system settings. We're going to come back to this in just a second. Let me finish going through the menu here. Under utilities, we have ARC, which is the archiving tool for zip, that sort of thing. KCALC, our scientific calculator. Uh, KWRITE is our text editor. It's your standard text editor. Also, we have Cute record my desktop for uh, recording your desktop. Spectacle, which is our screenshot utility, and then we have our power session stuff here. All right. Okay, guys. Let me right click on the desktop here. I'm going to choose to configure desktop. I'm going to see what kind of wallpaper options we have here with Calculate Linux. It looks like we have a, a number of options. Most of them are similar themed as the one I'm currently using though. It looks like a lot of them are this two penguin thing here. So I could change to this one here. It's blue with two penguins, has the Calculate Linux logo. Looks like there's about hmm, 10 or so of these uh, with a pair of penguins and Calculate Linux on them. Uh, let's see. You know what, here's one with a, a, a group of penguins. It looks like four of them. A little quartet of penguins and it has a easy Linux from the source. You know what, that's pretty cool wallpaper. I'm going to leave that one. If I'm going to use a light colored wallpaper, I would probably like a darker theme, window theme. So let me go back to system settings here. I wanted to go through everything in the uh, KDE system settings with you anyway. But the first thing is the workspace theme. By default, we have the Calculate Linux theme uh, uh, activated by default. Let me open up the Dolphin File Manager. It's a pretty sharp looking KDE theme here. It's not bad. We also have the Breeze theme, one of the default KDE themes. It's actually a really nice theme too, but it's a light theme. And I've got a light colored wallpaper you know we really want some contrast I'm gonna choose the breeze dark theme yeah and I really like that so I'm gonna leave that pretty cool let me go back to system settings show you the rest of uh, what is available inside KDE system settings we have options for colors fonts icons let's see what icon sets are installed by default we have the Edweta theme which is the default uh, icon set in the GNOME desktop environment. We have the Breeze theme, we have the Breeze Dark theme, we have Calculate Linux theme, and then we have the Oxygen icon theme, which has been the default KDE icon theme for years. I'm just going to leave it on the Breeze Dark theme. Also available in the system settings, we have options for desktop behavior, window management, shortcuts. We have our startup and shutdown. Uh, options here for auto start programs, background services, task scheduler, that kind of thing. We have our file search, we have account details, regional settings, notifications, applications, and online accounts. 
I also have some network configuration stuff and hardware configuration. We have input devices, display monitor, multimedia, power management, printers, and removable storage, I guess for you know creating thumb drives, that sort of thing. One thing, when I went through the menu and looked at the default suite of programs installed by default, I did not see any like GUI software center, software manager. So when I type software in the KDE menu, it returns nothing. So I don't know if, I mean, me, I, I, I would use the terminal to install and remove software anyway. I, I rarely ever use a GUI software manager or a software uh, installer. But for a lot of users, they expect to have some kind of GUI uh, interface. If I type update, I do get a program called Calculate Linux Update. So they do have a graphical way of updating your system. Let me launch this, see what it's all about. All right, so yeah, we have ticked on by default. Use only stable updates and then not ticked on. Search for the most appropriate update server and save packages used during builds. We have this little button, click for advanced settings. And then we have options for only synchronize repositories, update over overlays, pretend package updates. Then we have some uh, repository options. We have the Gen 2 repositories and the Calculate repositories. And some other advanced stuff. I'm not going to run an update on this video, uh, mainly because I'm not sure how old this particular ISO was of what I installed here for Calculate Linux. If it's more than a couple of weeks old, you know, it's going to be a very big update being rolling release uh, and it would take a long time. I'm not going to do that on this video. So some final thoughts on Calculate Linux. Uh, one thing I will say for a uh, KDE desktop edition, there was not a ton of software installed by default, which I like. I mean, it's, it's definitely not a bloated distro here. I mean, I notice it's missing a great many of the default uh, KDE programs you see installed on a lot of other KDE desktop distros. There's really not a ton of stuff installed by default. So, you know, kind of lightweight in that regard, which I like, you know. I like to be able to pick and choose what I want to install for various programs anyway. But the, the default programs it did install make sense. I mean, the LibreOffice suite, Firefox, you know, you have the Clementine audio player. I mean, you've got enough stuff here that you probably would have installed by default or you're okay with. I mean, even if you run something like Rhythmbox or Amarok normally, you're probably okay with the Clementine audio player. The install was super simple. There was, it's actually one of the easier installs I think I've done for any Gen 2 based distro. And there's been a few that I've installed that, that were pretty simple. Uh, the desktop, you know, it's standard KDE. KDE is a gorgeous desktop environment and their implementation of it is, is really nice. And the fact that it is 100% compatible with Gen 2, it, you can, uh, you know, use the Gen 2 repos, you can use Emerge to, you know, do all your package management stuff. I would say for those of you that are looking for a good, you know, home user, you know, desktop distro, but looking for a kind of a bleeding edge rolling release distro, which Gen 2 based, of course, that that's the case. Uh, Calculate Linux looks like it might be what you guys are looking for. I would probably recommend this for, you know, your standard desktop user that's looking for a rolling release experience. I would probably recommend something like this maybe over Sabion. Uh, I, honestly, the install process and everything on this was just as fast as Sabion, if not faster. I didn't have any issues with it. Uh, so I'm going to run this probably. I'm going to keep this installed in, in a virtual machine for a few weeks, maybe a few months. Keep it up to date, see if anything breaks, and keep you guys up to date on it. But overall, I give Calculate Linux an 8. Peace, guys.